So with the first descendant growing more and more popular as the days go by, I thought I'd bring you guys a guide for new and early players on 5 of the best weapons to get early game and to look out for. Having played with multiple characters and trying all kinds of different play styles, I feel I'm in a decent position to offer advice of 5 weapons indeed to look out for for early game players. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Now it's clear there are many, many weapons to unlock and to try out as your progression starts flowing, uh, but early game there isn't much in regards to pointers in the right direction to weapons which will not only do the most damage and make things easier for the player, but also modules and what you should be putting on your weapons. Okay, so before I talk about my 5 weapon recommendations, the module system in this game can be a little confusing for sure, but it's actually a very very helpful system in place which tells you what modules other experienced players are using on said weapons in this game's more difficult activities, uh, and I really suggest this system to players still getting used to weapons and their modules and what indeed will work best for said weapons. To find this, go into your inventory on the weapon you have decided to give your time to, select those module settings. On the right hand side of your screen you can see it says equip recommended modules. In this menu it states and gives you an idea of what other players are indeed using on the said weapon of choice. A very useful option for players to get used to what works best with said weapon. Just keep in mind the module capacity and its limits, yes this can be raised but I really wouldn't bother waste any materials you may have right now on weapons so early. I mean get used to the game first and then maybe later on if you really do like a weapon, even a weapon I suggest you today and you want to use it into end game, then probably expand on its capacity. Also guys keep in mind too this is a video for early and new players to the first descendant. In regards to weapon modules I will suggest for your weapons these will obviously also be new and early weapon modules that you will unlock early on. There's no point me recommending weapon modules you won't get until later on in the game and your progression. So if you're watching this as an experienced player please do keep that in mind and if you do have any tips for early and new game players even if you recommend a weapon let us know down below in the comments section. Now also in regards to weapon modules, uh, keep in mind that at the top of your screen you can have three settings which basically means you can experiment three different module loadouts uh, and quickly switch between them. Now to unequip modules from a certain weapon simply press that unequip all button where on Xbox and Playstation that is the right thumbstick or just go through them one by one taking off the ones, unequipping the ones you don't want to use because these are limited per different weapon. Yes, let's say you have a hero skull, which is the first weapon we will talk about, and you apply a certain module to it. That module then will be on all your hero scars from that moment forward. But if another scout rifle can also have that mod, unless you've got multiple of them, you will have to take it off the hero scar to pull it on that different scout rifle. Simple as that. Okay, so we're actually going to get into my top five, and first things first, the weapon I just spoke about, the Hero Scar. So the Hero Scar is a weapon that uses those impact rounds, that green ammo, but obviously hits like an absolute train. It was actually one of the first weapons I started using and was glued to it through leveling of my players. Now it's actually a weapon that when I was a very, very I mean like basic brand new player to the game ages ago when I first played the first Ascendant at Beta or Alpha days I started using this weapon and I forgot because it was so powerful I was using it against like enemies like 5 or 10 levels above the weapon itself I completely forgot because just how powerful this weapon is and seems to be there's also levels tied to weapons too and the higher the level the more power it does me using a level 1 hero scale against level 10 enemies felt normal then I realised guys, a level 10 will do so much more damage, I mean that was back then, I mean cut me some slack guys, it's been, I think I last played this before it was released, probably a year ago now, so yeah, craziness. So yeah, it's a weapon I used for a long long while, I then swapped it out when it started to feel a little bit sloppy, but luckily later on in my playthrough on a different character, I found another one that matched my level and I absolutely loved it. Now this is a weapon which also has a chance to drop from the real early mission of Calling of the Descendant Slumber Valley up on Kingston. So the weapon itself given how powerful it is is actually very good at close range too. With a decent magazine size and well amazing DPS values it's a surprise that the damage fall off is decent too. 
starting at around like 35 to 65 meter range which is decent when you think about it and how good this weapon is at close range too i mean hit firing it on bunning and running around enemies doing circles around them it felt great now in regards to modules uh, that you will be getting early game which can help this weapon i'd say insight wouldn't go a miss better concentration is a good one to use rifling enforcement for that extra attack damage is obviously one you want to put on but just the standard benefits of like reload, fire rate, accuracy, damage. I mean, if you have any modules like this, slot them on guys and check it out. If you don't feel it makes much of a difference, take them off. Simple as that. And that goes for every weapon I will mention today, not just this one. It also comes down to how you want to play the game in reality too. So yeah, you can also add chill, poison and so forth. That ain't bad options either, but what I will say is be careful of those negative effects. But yeah guys, Hero Sky is a great, great weapon you should definitely check out. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Red Wolf Handgun. Now handguns are amazing, surprisingly amazing for players who love to keep moving. Due to me being a big fan of Bunny, this weapon suits me perfectly. So the Red Wolf is a weapon you have a chance of dropping from the anticipated ambush point battlefield mission upon sterile land. A simple mission to do with a great chance of getting this thing to drop. Now in regards to modules here, Recycling Genius due to its low mag uh, would help you a lot due to just having a faster reload. Expand weapon charge for those extra rounds. I mean, can't go wrong there. Hawkeye for better accuracy, because if you're going to be shooting from the hip like I do, perfect. And better concentration for that extra bit of crit damage. Any other damage modules as well, slot them on. Now with handguns, it is really all about playstyles. So players like Ajax who can tank damage, players like Bunny who are quick and nimble, this will suit them best. As it is really a close range DPS quick firing weapon, but as soon as range does come into the equation, you start to notice a massive damage fall off. So yes, although it can be an absolute monster of a weapon, you have to be careful how you use it and use it right. But the Red Wolf handgun is a true, true monster within those close quarters battles. Next up, guys, we have the Devil's Cool SMG. Now, much like the last weapon we covered, SMGs are also amazing in the hands of players who like to be right in that action. Now these, when you compare them to handguns, are slightly different but do kind of do the same things. They offer more range than handguns, uh, but I feel like a step back in regards to close range damage. But the damage extends way beyond that of what a handgun can offer. Also offering a much bigger magazine size too, it is basically the perfect weapon in between assault rifles and handguns, it really is. So the Devil's Cool can be obtained from the Cooper Refinery Battlefield mission upon sterile land. So in regards to modules, early modules here, I look to expand on the magazine size. Again, upload that reload time, add accuracy as firing from the hip. This can help a ton here. Also adding a little damage to this wouldn't be a miss either. But yeah, guys, the simple modules to improve weapons. I mean, it's not rocket science. You should see and know the benefits of certain weapons. So yeah, try them out, guys. If you like them, stick them on. If you don't, take them off. Simple as that, people. But yes, this is definitely one of the better weapons early game. Super, super powerful again. Close to mid-range. This is an absolute beast. Next up, guys, we have the Magnus AA Assault Rifle. Now this is a weapon I was utterly loving when I first started playing using AX. It was just a perfect mid-range to semi-close range weapon. It really was and it hits super super hard too. It does have a great magazine size, decent fire rate also. I mean what's not to like here? Actually then I won't lie I forgot about it because I was just trying different weapons. Then through my bunny playthrough I unlocked it again, tried it out and again fell back in love with it. Now in regards to modules this thing gets even better. Again, add attack damage bonuses, they were plus here, no doubt. Also, I look to expand on its magazine size and fire rate, and also add a little bit of accuracy to it. Now, I won't lie with the accuracy mod I put on it, I could barely tell the difference with this one, on or off, so yeah. If you have other modules and want to save capacity, get rid of that accuracy. Now, there are a few ARs that you will use early game, but this one for me has been my go-to for sure. So you can get this weapon real early on from the mission on Kingston called Kingston Surveillance Radar. 
Now there are a few missions you will progress that will offer you this weapon, so it is quite a popular one, quite a common one, but for sure with the right modules this is an absolute insane weapon and because it's so popular and so common I wouldn't bother infuse this weapon people, I really wouldn't because it's going to drop much powerful uh, later on as you play so keep that in mind too, don't waste your materials, especially early game. Okay, so lastly guys, we have the Dogma 21, a special rounds beam rifle which hits like a truck. So beam rifles ain't normally my thing in games as such, but this one I just felt optimistic about. Now I won't lie, some players will not like this thing, but for me, I just feel it felt great to use. With its high DPS, high attack values and mag size, I thought I'd give it a try and I really liked it. Now this is a weapon you get from the Deception Transmitter Battlefield mission upon a sterile land and with it being a super quick mission to do also I feel there's no reason players shouldn't at least give this thing a try, uh, it may surprise you. So modules I think you should apply to this are the obvious attack power bonuses, reload time 2 won't be a miss and any elemental buffs, uh, I like to use the electric enhancement on it but you can go with what you want people. But the end result is a weapon I feel will make you feel like you are a Ghostbuster running around the battlefield frying those enemies. And it's why it's at my final spot in my 5 amazing weapons for new players and early players to try it out. That's it guys, the end of the video has arrived. If you have any recommendations of weapons for players to try it out, let us know down below. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more of the first descendant, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next. One.